Story 1. One day, a woman in her mid-50s called 911 stating she had been robbed at one of our local stores and said, Help! I've been robbed and need the police quick. She hung up and ignored all calls from dispatch trying to call her back. Naturally, when a call like that comes in, the dispatcher puts out an urgent call, and we all drop what we're doing and go. Code 3 lights and sirens. I was at a traffic stop when the call came over the radio. Knowing I was only a mile or so away, I ended the traffic stop, gave the driver back their license, and took off. I was the first to arrive, followed by several sheriff's deputies who provided mutual aid as were a small department. We got there and surveyed the area for the victim, which was unusual, as in my experience, people who need police quickly tend to meet us at our door before we even come to a stop. In this case, we had to actively look for the victim. As I walked toward the front door, thinking they went inside for safety reasons, I saw a short blue-haired woman with her hand in the air waving at us, saying, Hey officers, I'm over here. A deputy and I went over to her while the others were preparing to do a search. One of the deputies who responded had a K-9 and was getting his dog ready to track if needed. We went over to the woman and asked, It's our understanding you've been robbed, ma'am. How long ago was it? What did they rob you of? Which direction did they go afterward? She replied that it happened about 10 minutes earlier, stating they robbed her of about $300 and said they were still inside the store. The deputy and I looked at each other like, no, he can't be that foolish. Some criminals really are that foolish. Once, I was told that a guy stole a wallet from a man who then watched as the guy walked across the street to use his bank card. We got there just as he was walking out with two 24 packs of beer. I called over to the other deputies and told them the situation and that the suspect fled inside the store. So they gathered around to get more details on what the person looked like and what clothes they were wearing. I asked, ma'am, what did he look like? What was he wearing? She replied, ooh, he's wearing a store uniform. It was the manager, Mike. I asked, wait, you're telling us the manager came outside, robbed you, and then went back into work. She responded, no. He robbed me inside the store. He wouldn't accept my $300 off coupon for my purchases, so he robbed me of $300. I want him arrested, and you can be sure I am going to call his bosses to get him fired. I can't imagine him having a job after you guys arrest him anyway. The deputy and I exchanged a look of disbelief and told the other officers what the situation was. We made a plan for two of us to go in each of the main doors while one stayed with the victim, and the rest resumed their regular patrol. I said, okay, ma'am, remain here with this officer and give him your information. Deputy Jay and I are going to go inside and see if we can find Mike and get his side of the story since we got your side. She retorted, what side is there to get? You're supposed to always believe the victim, not the robber. I ignored the comment and walked in the door. As I walked in, the manager was already waiting for me. He was waiting to see if we needed anything from him as he thought there was an actual robbery incident in the parking lot. He had no idea we were there about him. I told him why we were there and what she said and everything. He did an actual facepalm and said, Oh my God, she actually did it. That woman is bonkers. We have issues with her every time she comes in, trying to use fake coupons she finds on Facebook and other Renate sites. When we tell her they can't be used as they're fake and even prove it by scanning the barcode, she always says we just don't want to honor the coupons because we're just mad and want to steal them. She claims Facebook only gives them to important clients, and if we don't process them, she's going to call 911 and say I robbed her. After talking to the manager a bit more about all the trouble she causes every time she comes in and how she was once temporarily banned for six months, he then directed me to the cashier who attempted to check her out. The cashier confirmed the woman was nuttier than a fruitcake and once attempted to use a one dollars off coupon she found online. Before leaving, I asked the manager if he wanted her trespassed. With a big smile, he said, absolutely. I walked back outside, and I didn't even have to say anything. I just nodded my head to the deputy. She knew that meant to hook her up with some shiny new bracelets for a trip to the county-owned bed and breakfast. After realizing what was happening, she promptly started screaming, what are you arresting me for? He's the one who robbed me. I'm the victim. You don't arrest the victim. She then started flailing and fighting with the deputy and myself, ending up having asphalt for lunch after she tried to back kick the deputy between the legs, forgetting she was a female. 
As we carried her to the car, still trying to kick us, she screamed about how the police never believed her when she told them she had been robbed. We finally got her in the car, and I read her Miranda warning. After I finished, I asked if she wished to speak to me about what happened. This was when she hawked back and, before I had time to react, spit directly in my face with most of it getting in my eyes. She screeched the whole 20-minute ride to the station about how she's the victim, how she's going to sue the store for making false claims, and how I and the deputy better start putting in applications at McDonald's and Burger King, as I'm going to be out of a job soon and living on the street as she's going to take everything I own when she sues me. She actually did file a complaint with Internal Affairs and the sheriff. And when we were cleared of any wrongdoing, she tried to sue but was promptly dismissed and was literally laughed out of court by the judge. Asterisk side note asterisk while I was at the jail doing my paperwork. I did a search for her name. I found she had no previous arrests, which I was sure I'd find at least one or more. But nope, I did, however, find at least six reports with her name as the victim in unfounded calls. And to my surprise, not a single arrest or citation issued, just no trespass orders. She was ultimately charged with misusing the 911 system misdemeanor, filing a false police report misdemeanor, battery on a law enforcement official felony, battery on an officer with bodily fluid spit felony because her spit landed in my eyes. From my understanding from the district attorney, after she was found guilty at trial, she spent a little bit of time in jail for that stunt and was banned from that store for life and from just about every store in the area as she caused trouble at all of them. But it's been seven or eight years, and I haven't been out on a call for her. So I don't know if she's moved on to another area or what, but I never answered another call regarding her. Story 2 This is a story from about 50 years ago, so I'm almost certainly paraphrasing. Small details like exact locations and money might be a bit off. Now to our main cast. Taxigran, the star of this crazy show. Fee Thief, the scumbag who tried to run away from the taxi bill. Tired Cop, the police officer who was done with everyone's nonsense. Thief's friends one and two, the nice friends of Fee Thief. Setting, Taxigran was in her 20s at the time, lived in Newcastle, England, and worked as a taxi driver to pay the bills and put food on the table. Now on to the story. Late in the night on one of her usual shifts, she was signaled by Fee Thief to pick him up. She pulled over, led him into the taxi, and then asked, Where are you heading, sir? He gave her the location of a certain club, and she proceeded to drive towards it. When Taxigran and Fee Thief arrived at the club, she said, 20 pounds, please. Fee Thief bolted as fast as possible. Now, as Taxigran was in a small panic and quite mad at Fee Thief for not paying her, she did the only appropriate thing and ran over his foot. Once Fee Thief's foot was under the extremely heavy taxi, he started screaming bloody murder and dropped to the floor like a sack of potatoes. This conversation ensued. Fee thief, you crazy witch, get off my foot right now. Taxigran, my wheel isn't moving until the police arrive, you scumbag. Fee thief, get off. Taxigran, you can get lost. I'm not moving until the police arrive. Fee thief kept swearing in pain while sobbing. After the police were called and there was a lot of bickering, our tired cop arrived and started by talking to Taxigran. Tired cop. Ma'am, why are you currently parked on this man's foot, looking sleepy and apathetic? Taxigran. He ran off on the fare, and I need my pay. Tired cop. Okay, please can you go into greater detail? Taxigran explained what had happened up until that point. Tired cop then walked up to Fee Thief, listened to his side of the story, reached into Fee Thief's pocket, took his wallet out, reached for a 20 pounds note in Fee Thief's wallet, handed it to Taxigrin, and then asked her, Can you please remove your wheel from his foot now, ma'am? Taxigrin, yes, officer. She then gently rolled her wheel off Fee Thief's foot, and he was driven to the hospital. You may think this is the end, but there's one last bit that is the cherry on top of this story. Four hours later, Taxigrin was still on the job near the just-closed clubs, looking for someone to signal her over. Just on cue, two people Thief Friends 1 and 2 did just that, so she picked them up as usual. Then Thief Friend 1 asked, Can you wait here for someone? They won't be long. Taxigran, Sure, I can wait. Five minutes later, a not-so-friendly face walked in with crutches and broken pride. Fee Thief. Fee Thief. Wait, you are the witch that broke my foot. Thief Friend 2. Wait, 
a girl broke your foot. Now, my grandma, Aka Taxigrin, being from a time where sexism was still somewhat acceptable, Thief Thief didn't tell his mates a woman broke his foot in fear of getting picked on. Thief friends one and two kept laughing and snickering. Taxigrin, you, get out. Fee Thief, but my mates are here, he says in the most moany way possible. Taxigrin, I don't care, get lost. Fee Thief, guys, help me out here. Thief friends one and two. We're all right, mate. You can figure this one out yourself. Fee Thief, fine. He walked away like a defeated six-year-old. Taxigrin, give me a second, gents. She got out of the taxi and yelled to the other taxi drivers up front. None of you take this thieving jerk. She then took the friends to their homes while they joked and laughed so hard about their thieving friend. Moral of the story, don't mess with my grandma. Story 3. This happened earlier this week. Quick background info. I work at a company that installs custom closets. Our uniform includes a blue button-up Carhartt shirt with the company logo on it. I think some of you may already be picking up on where this is going. So, I'm driving home from work after a very long and tedious day, completely covered in sawdust, when I get a call from my lovely wife. She had put in a pickup order at the local Walmart, but they had failed to give her our almond milk. She asked if I'd be willing to stop and let them know they shorted us and grab it. While I'm not particularly enthusiastic to add a stop on my way home, I tell her okay. I get there and head over to the customer service desk and explain the situation. The lady working there is very sweet and tells me she'll have somebody from the pickup department swing over and take care of me. She gestures toward a nearby bench and informs me I can have a seat while I wait. I gladly did so and promptly pulled out my phone and attempted to disassociate for a few minutes. A few minutes, maybe five at most, go by and a line forms up. I guess the lady at the desk stepped away for a moment. I start to hear grumbling about lazy employees and how nobody has any work ethic anymore. Wish I could be more specific on their exact phrasing, but I was trying very hard not to pay attention to anything going on around me at this point. After a few more moments, I hear a very aggressive clearing of a throat followed by a very annoyed sounding. Excuse me, sir, I've been waiting for help for over 10 minutes. I look up to see a woman holding an armful of clothes glaring at me. She will henceforth be referred to as glaring woman. Me. Well, I find that unlikely as I haven't even been here for 10 minutes, and I got here before you. Glaring woman. Well, maybe this would go faster if you weren't messing around on your phone. At this point, I've now connected the dots and realized that she thinks I work here. I'm about to utter the classic I don't work here line when an idea hits me. Me. You're right. Sorry for holding you up. I pull up the Walmart app on my phone and show her the almond milk. My wife and I didn't get the almond milk we ordered. We were supposed to get two cartons. Glaring woman. Why are you showing me your phone? Me. So you can grab me my almond milk. Is that not why you're here? Glaring woman. You. No. I don't work here. Me. Q's malicious grin. Well, neither do I. How about we stop bothering each other now? She looked me up and down, and I could see realization dawn on her face. She quietly walked back to the line, and I sat back down on my bench. Eventually, the desk lady came back and got the line moving, and an employee from the pickup department came and got me my milk. And that's the story. At least she didn't try to get me fired. Story 4. This happened about a year ago, four months after I had been enlisted into the Swedish Armed Forces. To put some perspective on this, the Swedish Armed Forces enlists a few thousand people every year who just finished high school for 9 to 11 months. We who are enlisted get a form of compensation for this not salary. This compensation comes from taxes, and because of this, we don't pay taxes on this income. It's not a lot of money, but it's still money. Anyway, most of the time, I went home wearing my uniform because people tend to smile at you or start small conversations about how life in the army is and such. Mind you, this is Sweden. Talking to strangers very rarely happens, but I enjoy doing it, so the uniform is a conversation starter. That and the kind of silent respect you get from people around you. I liked it. On this occasion, two friends and I, who I was serving with, I'll call them friend one and friend two, all wearing the uniform, arrived at our home city, a big city, and proceeded to walk towards the subway from the train station when we heard an angry voice behind us. Entitled mother, how dare you? We just ignored it because there was no reason to think it was directed towards us. 
entitled Mother. Don't ignore me, you pieces of trash. At this point, I turned around to see what the fuss was about, and I saw Epps staring at us with a child, maybe ten, at her side. Me. Sorry, what? I was a little bit annoyed by her choice of language, but put on a smile. Entitled Mother, aren't you recruits? Me. Well, sorta. We attained the rank of private about a month ago, but we're still pretty fresh. Entitled Mother, what gives you the right to take our tax money just so that you can go and play war in the woods? Me. Excuse me. Entitled Mother, I'm a hard-working single mother, and I have to pay extra taxes just so that you idiots can slack off at some military base. How is that fair? I could have spent that money on taking care of my son instead. At this point, Friend 1 steps in. Friend 1. Listen, we don't choose how the system works. I'm sorry that it's inconvenient for you, but that's how it is, and you'll just have to accept it. Entitled Mother. Don't you dare speak to me like that. Sweden is a neutral country, and we don't need an army. People like you have no use for our society. Me? Well, sorry to hear that you feel that way, but what do you want us? Three basically recruits who have nothing to say in the military hierarchy to do about it. You want us to give back the small amount of money we get to you? Entitled Mother, yes. Me? Are you serious? Entitled Mother, yes. You said it was only small money, so what do you care if I have it? That way, you would actually help the people, and I can care for my son. Me. Okay, I'm going to make this clear to you. The reason we are in training is so that one day, if war comes to us, we will have the capability to protect this country and everyone in it. We will be prepared to put down our lives if necessary to keep everyone, even selfish, ungrateful pricks like you, safe. I said this last part probably a little louder than I had to and I noticed that a lot of people around us were now looking. To my slight surprise, though, they were all staring at the woman in front of us. All three of us are pretty big guys, all over 185 centimeters and muscular, and she is basically shoulder height on me. But does she back down? Nope. She slaps me hard, square in the face. I was pretty furious at this point, but I kept my cool long enough for the best part to happen. This old man, without doubt 75 plus, walked up to the woman and pushed her hard backward, and she fell over. Old man. Punching a soldier in uniform is a serious criminal offense. If he wants to charge you, you're looking at prison time. Several people in the crowd murmured their compliance. Om looked over to me. I stared at the woman dead in the eyes as I said, Someone call the police, please. I'll be pressing charges. Entitled mother. Oh yeah, I will charge you for assault. Jerk, she screamed at the man. Old man, be my guest. I acted in others' defense in accordance with the law, basically self-defense. But you defend someone other than yourself. At this point, the M seemed to realize that she couldn't win, so she grabbed her son and attempted to run off. But my friends grabbed her. Old man, are you okay? I laughed a little. Me? Yeah, don't worry about me. Friend two punches way harder than that. We spar a lot with each other. Friend two just smirked and shook his head. I think the old man his name was David, super nice guy, and apparently ex-defense forces, and my friends and I waited till the cops got there. She spent the 10 minutes it took the cops to get there literally screaming that she had a great lawyer and that we couldn't touch her. This is funny to remember because she got a three-month jail period for this.